In this video, I'm going to give you some tips uh, for using the disk and the shell method. So we're going to go over both methods, we're going to compare them, and with the things that you see in this video, in theory, you should be able to do any problem using the disk or shell method. So the first method we'll talk about is the disk method. So when I say disk method, I also mean the washer method. So a washer is a disk with a hole. So it's pretty much the same thing. So disk method. So the first thing you should know with the disk method is that your rectangles are always perpendicular to your axis of revolution. So when you're setting up the problems and you draw your rectangle, it should always be perpendicular. So rectangles are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And this is absolutely critical. Like I cannot emphasize how important this is. So the rectangles are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And you know what? Let's go ahead and draw a comparison right away. Let me come down here and I'm going to write the shell method. So for the shell method, it's very, very similar, but it's not. It's different but we can still make a statement about the rectangles. In this case, the rectangles are parallel. The way I always used to teach it is shell parallel, shell parallel, so shell parallel. <laughs> so rectangles are parallel to the axis of revolution. So the first step in the problems is typically to draw your rectangle. So if you decide you're using the disk method, then uh, your rectangle has to be perpendicular to the axis. If you're using the shell, it has to be parallel. Okay, so in the disk method, your big R of x, so big R of x, and I'm assuming it's a function of x. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, if you have a vertical rectangle, you have a function of x. Horizontal rectangle, you have a function of y. And I'll write all that down in, in a few minutes. So big R of x is going to be the distance from the far end of the rectangle. So from far end of rectangle. to your axis of revolution. So it's really important to know this because it's always a good idea to draw a big R in the problems. And we'll do lots of examples in a minute. So it's a distance from the far end of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. One way to think about it is it's the full distance. I like using that word. It feels like it's just easier to think about. It's the full distance. So big R is the full distance. Little r of x. And again, uh, little r of x is zero in the disk method, and it's a non-zero quantity in the washer method. So I, mean, I probably should just put washer here. So disk slash washer method. So little r of x is the distance from the close end to the axis of revolution. So distance from the close end of rectangle, from close end of rectangle. My handwriting is getting bad. You know, to 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 axis of revolution, to axis of revolution. That's actually it. That's actually all you need to know besides the formula. Like with these two things, and well, there's one other thing I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you'll be able to do any problem uh, using the disk method. You'll become a disk method master. So disk has the pi, and I'll just use a and b here. We'll pretend we have functions of x, and a and b are x values, and you square the r. This is the easy part to remember. The formula is not the hard part. It's the, it's the setting up. And dx, that's a 2. OK, so that's the, that's the disk method. Now let's talk a little bit more about the shell method. So for the shell method, your h, and again, I'll assume it's a function of x. This is the longer part. So it's the height of the rectangle. That's why books tend to use h, h for height. Height of rectangle. And it's the, it's the longer part, okay, longer part. Apologies for my handwriting. It's uh, been writing a lot today, so longer part. 
And uh, p is the distance. This is a confusing one for people. Little p is the distance uh, from the tip of the rectangle. So distance from like the skinny part. So distance from, I'll just say tip to axis. So like, let's say, let's say you were spinning it here and this is your rectangle. This is P right here, this distance. That's your P. The distance from the skinny part uh, to, to the axis, so that would be your, your P. I'm use a different color, that's P. Okay, and then the formula for shell. So shell has the two pi, so it's two pi, integral A to B, and it's P of X, H of X, DX. All of the stuff is extremely useful. Uh, I kind of emphasize how important this is. I, I, I wouldn't have spent uh, the time to make a video on this if it wasn't important. This is like critical. With these things, you can do the problems. If you, if you remember these things, you can do anything. Uh, super, super powerful. Now in both methods, so in both methods, this is also extremely important. So in both methods, this is considered, by the way, like one of the hardest topics in uh, Calculus 2. In both methods, if you have a vertical rectangle, so a vertical rectangle, this is huge. You have a function of x, always. All your functions are functions of x. I'll just put funks of x, funks of x. And if you have a horizontal rectangle, and these are things that aren't really in books. Like um, I just made all this up and uh, it works. So this is funks of y. So you can actually do the problems. All right, good stuff. Let's maybe do a, a, a few examples of, of using the uh, disk and shell method. Um, let's just do a few. So I'm gonna pick something that's very easy to graph and we're not gonna evaluate it. We're just gonna set it up. Let's say we have uh, y equals the square root of x. Real, let's pick a really easy region and uh, x equals four and y equals zero. So this is our region. Okay, this is our, our region. And let's just maybe rotate it around. Um, first, let's, let's, let's do part A. So let's rotate this about, I don't know, let's do the x-axis first. Okay, so I'll do it over here. So solution, use a, a different color. So first thing we have to do is graph our function. So this is the y-axis, this is the uh, x-axis. And again, I picked a really easy region to graph. This is the square root of x, it does this, and this is four. And so it comes up here. Y equals zero is a, a horizontal line on the x-axis, so that's gonna create our, our, our boundary on the bottom. And this y value here is two. And the reason is if you plug in four into this function, you get the square root of four, which, which is two. Okay, and we're spinning it about the x-axis. So let me indicate that by putting a little symbol here. That's called the axis of revolution. Wherever you spin it, uh, you call that the, the axis of revolution. So this problem doesn't specify what method to use. So the easiest method is always the method that involves a vertical rectangle. So what do you do? You draw a vertical rectangle. <laughs> and you can do this pretty much every time. I think I've only encountered one problem in my life where I wasn't able to do it both ways. Um, I don't know if it's possible, and uh, yeah. Anyways, so we have a vertical rectangle. So because our rectangle is perpendicular to our axis of revolution, that means we're using disk, you see? So we let the rectangle dictate the method. So if you always draw a vertical rectangle and then you ask yourself, okay, if it's perp, I'll use disk. If it's parallel, I'll use shell. That's usually the easiest way to go. So we drew our rectangle. It's perpendicular to the axis, so we're using disk. So now what is big R? Big R is the full distance. So this is big R. This is big R, and it's a function of x because we have a vertical rectangle. There is no little r. So big R, well, it's just gonna be the square root of x, right, because that's what, that's what this function is. And so the integral would be v equals, disk has the pi, and then we're going from zero to four, and we have the square root of x squared dx. And that would be the integral that gives us the volume. I should mention this, do not try to memorize other things besides what you see here. I mean, you might find, you might think you find another pattern. Um, you might be able to, but 
I don't advise it. These things will give you the answer every time. Um, a lot of times people do these problems and they try to like create scenarios in their head where like, oh, if I do it this way, this will always work. Usually that's not the case. Okay, usually it's not the case. Let's do another one. Uh, let's do B. Let's go about. Let's go about the. Um, let's go about the y-axis. I, I could have done this one with shell also, but I, I decided against it just to save time. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. Same picture, right? Same picture. So boom, boom. Except we're spinning it here this time. So uh, if we're spinning it about the y-axis. Uh, let's draw a rectangle. Aha! So we draw a rectangle, and we decided to draw a vertical rectangle because we like functions of x, right? So we said, hey, let's use a vertical rectangle. But now um, the rectangle is parallel, so shell parallel. So now we're using the shell method. You see how that works? So you let the rectangle dictate your method. It's really a, a really beautiful way to do it because uh, that way you, you're forcing x values on the problem. Because remember, if you do this, you have functions of y, so we'll have to work a little bit harder. And we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so we're using shell. So in shell, h is the length or the height of the long part. So there it is. There's h of x. And p is the distance uh, from the skinny part to your axis. So there is p. So h of x in this case is simply going to be the square root of x. It's just the height. P of x is just x. People have a hard time with this part here. P of x is always going to be like x or like 2 minus x or, or 3 minus x. It's always going to be something really simple. Um, why is it x? Well, we're integrating from 0 to 4, and so x varies. So P is just this distance. So it's just going to be x as x varies from 0 to 4. So our volume is 2 pi, because shell has the 2 pi, and we're going from 0 to 4. And it's pH, so it's x squared of x dx. Uh, this video is already 12 minutes, but you know what? Who cares? Let's do another one. So C. How about we spin it? Uh, I know what we should do. Let's go about, this is a really instructive example, about x equals, uh, how about 10? This is pretty good. It's a good example. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And so I'm going to draw our little picture here because we kept the same picture. It's really convenient to use the same picture to explain these things. Uh, and then here's our axis of revolution. So we're spinning it here. And again, we like vertical rectangles because that's what we are. <laughs> so there it is. And it's parallel. So again, once again, we're using, we're using the shell method to, to do this problem. So again, h of x is the length of the long piece. P of x is the distance from the skinny part to the axis. Notice how I drew P on the screen. It is extremely important um, and beneficial to actually identify P and H and R and all that stuff in every single problem because by doing that, you can clarify your thoughts. And you can actually figure out what it is. You could probably do it in your head. It's not a good idea. So H of x is the square root of x. All right, so what is p? So p is this distance. Well, we know that this distance here is x. And this big distance here is 10. So p, to find p, you just take this big distance here and you subtract x. So p of x is 10 minus x. That's beautiful, amazing. So p of x is just this distance here. So you take 10 and you take away this piece here, this x piece, and you're left with 10 minus x. So v is equal to 2 pi, because shell has the 2 pi. And we're going from, um, from 0 to 4, and it's pH, so it's 10 minus x, square root of x dx. And that would be the volume that gives you the, the integral that gives you the volume. Okay, let's, maybe I can squeeze in one more, I don't know. Let's see, yep, I can, I have room. So let's do D. My, my screen runs out of room with this uh, software I use. Makes it a little bit difficult to do uh, longer problems. Um, let's go about y equals 22. Say 22, yeah, why not? Let's go nuts. So here is 4, and it's not drawn to scale, but here is 22. So there's our y equals 22. 
Again, not drawn to scale because this is 2. <laughs> so the distance between 2 and 22 does not look like 20. And we're spinning it um, up here. And again, we're a fan of vertical rectangles. So now our rectangle is perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So remember, when you're perpendicular, you use disk. So let's draw big R and little r. So big R is the full distance. Okay, big R is the full distance. And little r is this distance here. Okay, it's a really instructive example because you can see exactly what big R and little r are. You can see what they are. That, that wasn't <laughs> too many r's in that sentence. So what is big R? It's this distance here. So this distance here, let me draw it in yellow, is the square root of x. So big R of x, well, this distance here is 22. So big R of x is 22 minus the square root of x. It's top minus bottom. See that? Actually, no, that's wrong. I messed up. See, big R of x is just the full distance. I don't need to do that for big R. Big R is just always 22. Yep. Confusion, it happens. Little r, I meant to say little r, Little r is this distance here, so it'll be 22 minus the square root of x. There we go. So big R is always 22. Let me just emphasize that again. So it's this blue distance here. It's always 22. No matter where you draw the rectangle, that full distance is always 22, this blue line here. Little r, I'll use a different color once again, is this distance here. This is your little r. So little r is going to be the 22 minus the square root of x. So that'll give you this. And then finally the volume would be pi because this has the pi. We're going from 0 to 4 and it's big R. So 22 squared minus and then little r 22 minus the square root of x squared dx. Video is getting long so I'm wearing down so it's already been 17 minutes of disk and shell. <laughs> Um, I think that's good for this video. In the videos that follow, you'll see plenty of examples, and you'll see some examples with horizontal rectangles. Whenever you have a horizontal rectangle, you have a function of y. So you have to take you have to take what you have, like in this case we had y equals square root of x, and you have to solve this for for x, like you would square both sides, and so you would get x equals y squared. So you'll see examples of that in the videos that follow. But at least now, in theory, you could do pretty much every case. Uh, as long as you allow yourself to use to use both methods. I hope this video has been helpful.